Hi, welcome to Conversion Conversations. This is Cameron, and today I'm taking a look at Mastermind Creations reformatted R38 Foxfire and NI, otherwise known as uh, the Decepticon Justice Division's pet and nickel. Um, I was pretty excited about getting these guys. I actually got the toys, I think, several months ago. I just never got them out of the packaging with how busy life has been. Um, but I am really excited to have them in hand. Uh, I played around with them for a bit, and we're going to get into my thoughts on them. So we'll start out with kind of what all they can do. Um, Foxfire is the pet, which uh, by now, hopefully, this isn't a spoiler for anyone. He is also... Um, uh, Dominus Ambus, who was a spy uh, for the Autobots on the Decepticon division that they enslaved and kind of messed with him, unfortunately. He has a really pretty alt mode. I like this green color. I like his Turbo Fox mode. Um, the articulation's nice. Um, I gotta be careful, because if I go too far, if you put too much pressure on the head, his face will pop off. But he's got good articulation on the head, waggle. The ears can move independently as well. Um, plenty of articulation in the shoulders to do whatever you would like with them. Uh, double jointed elbows, there we go. A lot of articulation in the paw and separate from the paw we have the claws that can articulate. Same thing on the back legs to uh, he's got those digitigrade digit legs uh, so those can move independently. Uh, actually, I think his heels should be up in this mode. Uh, his own claw and, uh, I was going to say wrist swivel, but ankle swivel. The problem I do have on his ankle tilt is uh, it doesn't go very far forward. This is as far forward as it goes um, without it popping out of the socket, which is unfortunate. Um, he does have ab crunch in two different places, which helps him get good beast mode posability and then a tail that does waggle around like a good foxy boy. As well as kind of these um, Ravage-like missile pods on his hips that they also articulate independently. So yeah, a pretty cool beast mode. Um, he can do different things in his beast mode. They gave us plenty of bits with him. The first one is he does come with a chain and collar. Um, oh yeah, that's the, the other complaint I have for him is that his uh, bot mode head does not hide very well. It's kind of just sticking down there. Um, we can put the tab right here on top of uh, this slot right here. And that, oh, if I can, there it is. It gives him a chain that, let's say, our buddy over here from the DJD wants to walk his pet. We can absolutely do that, get nickel in the background for now. Um, so I, I do appreciate that. They also gave us a much more, because um, he's technically a spark eater, right? They turned him into a spark eater, which is like a zombified transformer. Um, they did give us, and I wasn't sure if they were going to do, because his faceplate does come off, the fox faceplate. Um, but they gave us a whole fox head that's, you know, more messed up with the spark eater, little side pieces, the messed up eye. Um, it looks really awesome. You can pop the whole head off the ball joint. Put his new head on. Oh. There we go. And now he's got like that deranged spark eater look, which is awesome. So yeah, overall, um, in alt mode, pretty happy with this boy. Um, we'll see in a moment kind of the issues I have with both these toys comes more due to transformation and some, some robot stuff. But uh, for the pet, I, I kind of like him in this cleaner mode, imagining that, you know, this is before he got captured. Um, I like him. Oh, that's... There we go. Get his head back in. The pet so far in alt mode, I, I'm a big fan of. I, I enjoy getting a beast former from a third party company every once in a while, so very happy about that. Then Nickel here, this is Nickel in her uh, land mode. Um, it's a mess of a Cybertronian vehicle mode, but that's because Nickel is 
a weird quadruple changer that uh, is very adorable. Um, so here she's like in this semi-tank thing. Um, I actually prefer just like that in tank mode. Um, she does have her submersible mode, which I believe has these wings on it. And then we can send out her submersible hands. I do not believe her legs change in any way whatsoever. Um, if we wanted to, and it's a bit tough, um, this piece here I thought was all molded one piece. But we can, oops. but we can actually remove it if we can get something thin underneath. There we go. Pop that out because she also has a flight mode. Oh, actually, that's the other thing I missed for her submersible mode. Uh, sh her submersible mode gets a little submarine periscope. So there, you can have her, you know, floating around doing her thing on the sea floor. Then, if we want to get her in flight mode, we take the periscope off, we put a tail fin up top, her wings, they get replaced by longer wings representing those pieces extending. Would have been cool if they actually extended, but I, I can understand how that might have been very hard to do. And yeah, as you can see, like, I've got little bits everywhere and they're flying off. And that's probably my biggest complaint about these toys is, uh, they are small and delicate, um, in a way that I just wasn't expecting MMC stuff to be. But here is her flight mode, um, uh, which is neat. And then all these extra pieces, I'm not going to use these. I'm going to be flipping her between one vehicle mode and the other, probably her land mode. Um, so put that on. We'll put these on and this is where I'll get the most value out of is is the main transformation which I wish meant that she had less pieces uh, involved there's a whole baggie there's so I've done the turbo fox pieces there's this purple handle there's all sorts of tools that she's gonna use um, also face plates uh, like three of them that we'll get into later as well as, you know, the cart. So a lot of little stuff came in here to try and give you money um, for the box you're buying. But as toys go, I don't know if all the value is there. For me, the value is in getting transforming action figures of these awesome characters that I really love. So that was the different configurations. Let's go ahead and get into transformation. Let's see if we can avoid popping anything off. Uh, starting out with the pet. We're going to open up his tail, or, or Dominus Ambus, I guess, because he doesn't transform once he's the pet. Um, yep, I said let's not pop anything off, and immediately the tail comes apart. Um, then we're going to come in and extend our legs here. We extend them fully, get those heels that I put away in alt mode. Pop these out. Hard to get my nail under there. Consistent complaint I have with I, I think these are awesome characters and I'm glad I have toys of them But as like MMC releases, I think they're on the weaker end. So that brings Dominus Ambus's legs down and we got those tails out of the way now we can come in on uh, Let's see if we can get him standing raise our camera just the teeniest bit the nice thing is the transformation is pretty simple, even if it's unfortunately fiddly. Um, come in on his arm. We're going to pull his claws up and lay them flat against his forearm, which allows us to turn... Oh, there's another piece going. Turn his wrist around, getting the claws sideways, giving him his full articulation. And that is a hip missile that is down. And then same thing on the other side. Pull the claw up. Rotate the wrist 90 degrees. There we go. Now we're going to come in and we're going to bring the fox head all the way down. We're going to bring his mane back. And it's on a double hinge that we can collapse back. Uh, I thought it collapsed further, but I don't want to hurt the toy. So I think that's as far as it Oh, right, because we need to collapse his chest. So we drop 
his chest down, compressing his torso, and I think bringing these tail pieces up. And yeah, this is, again, the unfortunate complaint I'm going to have with these figures is, like, this was, nothing locks in a place super well, his legs, like, this, I feel like, should have locked into a single joint so that I just have the knee joint instead of the digit digitigrade legs. Uh, yeah, I struggle to say that word, apparently. Um, we have, uh, his hip piece keeps falling off. We have this cool figure of Dominus Ambus, but even at, with how simple that transformation was, it doesn't feel great. He doesn't, like, convincingly feel like he's locked in place. Um, it's, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm uh, not complaining too hard, but uh, it's definitely going to affect my recommendation of the figure. In terms of articulation, it's really nice. Uh, okay, I'm going to leave that piece off. His head moves around, his shoulders move around plenty on two different joints, his uh, shoulder spike gets out of the way for his articulation. As we mentioned in Fox mode, he's got double jointed elbows, so you get plenty of articulation there. Wrist swivel in two different places. Okay, those hip pieces are gone. Uh, then we got not a incredibly flexible Van Damme pose, but plenty of forward and backward articulation, uh, single jointed knee, and the feet, uh, as I mentioned before, the tilt doesn't, it, it goes a little bit side to side, but forward isn't great, um, which does limit his posability to some extent. And yeah, like I said, Am I, am I glad that I have Dominus Ambus in my collection? Yes. He was a cool character that was an important part of IDW that I'm glad there's a figure of. Um, if someone else did a better version, would I swap them out? Probably. Because he, he's just a little bit too delicate for my taste. I'm a bit ham-fisted. Uh, I like to play with my toys. I recognize that he might be a little bit too uh, delicate for me. Uh, now we'll get into Nickel. Uh, Nickel has a, a pretty interesting transformation, I think. First, we're going to start out by relieving her of her backpack. Uh, it That slot goes on top of these double tabs here, opening that up. Then we can come in, uh, moving those out of the way for more clearance. Her uh, tires, front tires, move to the side, like so. Uh, which can go out behind her, allowing us to open up the rear tire section, separating things out, giving us clearance all around. And again, it's a bit of a messy transformation. Um, it, it's interesting, like, build-wise they feel really good, um, but design-wise it kind of feels like MMC from uh, the mid-2010s. Uh, we're going to come in and flip out wheels here, and I've got a big complaint about these wheels here, uh, to that form her feet, same thing on this side, get these guys out. Now that that is out of the way with, we're going to lift up this section of her, oh actually, we can go ahead and do this part. Her waist starts out uh, 90 degrees to her torso, we can go ahead and lock it in place, flipping it around, getting it where we would like her waist to be. Now we can come in on the top of her little, I don't know what you call it, not a cockpit. The bulb part, we lift it up, which allows us to separate it, and we can split out the pieces and bring them to the sides. Again, the word I'd use for these guys is fiddly, which to me is very, there we go, very much out of character for Mastermind Creations. Now uh, there's places, tabs for uh, these side pieces of her pod to lock into her torso. We gotta bring her torso forward, which we can do. It has a sliding 
axis that we can bring it up on, which lets us, we can take these tabs here and lock them in at the sides. Oop, too close to my camera. One side, get that other side. There we go. That does click in nicely. That feels like a bit of old MMC, not old, a bit of classic MMC magic. Uh, her head always pops off when I try and flip and lock her uh, collar piece in place, but that's okay because it can pop right back on. There we go. Uh, so her legs are done as well as her, uh, uh, there we go, her um, torso. Next, we can come in on her arms. These pods separate out away from this green piece, uh, separating out the wheel also. Flip the wheel out, that separates. We can flip her hands out on both sides. And I think I mistransform her intentionally at this point. Um, the wheels we can flip. It's on a, a double jointed axis that we can slide in and lock in a place to kind of get that. I think that's correct. But then uh, the rest of her arm armature, um, like there's this gap here and I just want to close it. There we go. And it looks a little funny to me. Um, the other part that, that feels weird is, ah, there we go. Uh, her, her shoulder rotation, you rotate it up and unless it catches a certain way, her arms don't sit flush next to her body. Um, but there we go. There is Nickel who I'm gonna get struggled, I'm gonna struggle to get standing because as far as I can tell, there's nothing locking these wheels down here. So like, she has no ankle articulation. Unless she's leaning up against someone, uh, you put her out and she's fallen over because this, this rotates perfectly freely. I don't know if I'm missing a piece. Um, that just seems boneheaded to me and unfortunate uh, with how much I, I like the alt modes and then the bot modes um, just Missing that bit of articulation on her essentially renders so much of her posability useless because so much of your time is spent trying to get her just standing with someone else. Um, her articulation, her head moves just fine. Shoulders 360, in and out. This hits here, so it prevents you from going 90. Single bicep rotation, hand swivel, uh, waist goes, uh, swivels. Legs are perfectly posable with a nice, turn it, double, not double, oh yeah, double, double jointed knee. Um, just this, this looseness right here, this is terrible. Uh, it's really unfortunate, I mean she's my only option for a nickel, but I would absolutely get a different nickel um, that didn't fall over constantly. I'm going to try and use her, maybe I can use her armature pieces as some sort of resistance to her toppling over. Hey, there we go. But that sucks. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Um, in terms of other stuff, she does come with a face plates. Um, I've actually not tried to replace them on camera. I think you have to go with a screw and get it out of there. Um, actually, I don't think you do. We can come in underneath her ball socket it looks like and press never mind very easy to replace press that face out we've got a very happy face we've got a scaredy face and we've got like kind of a surprise face we're gonna go we're gonna make nickel as happy as possible because there we go she is my xenophobic happy wife um, I think she's just adorable. And of course she's not going to stand now because this was not great design. Which again is unfortunate. She comes with all sorts of other stuff. Uh, she's got a handle for, um, 
we got a, a complete like dedicated gun mode here for Voss. Um, so if you don't want to transform Voss but you still want his gun mode, you can absolutely use this bad boy. Uh, which you can swap out the handle for whatever you like. I, I like transforming Voss and putting him in gun mode, so I'm not going to do that. Um, she's got all sorts of tools that you can hang on her little tool belt. Uh, looks like I've already kind of mashed uh, one of the potential hanging spots, which is unfortunate. But we can hang all the different tools in her bag on her belt. And they do look, I mean, if you can get Nickel standing, they do look good with the rest of the DJD so far, um, so I like that. It's just, you know, unfortunately fiddly transformations and uh, this ankle thing is just a huge miss. Um, so I can't recommend them. I'm happy I've got them in my collection. If I get the opportunity, I'll replace them. I don't know of a good way to fix these ankles, but uh, other than that, yeah, that's a quick look at uh, MMC's reformatted R38 Foxwire and Nickel. Um, you know, if, if you love the DJD, I think they're necessary, but if not, it's, it's a pass. There's stronger MMC options out there. All right, have a great day, everyone. See ya.